Hi everyone, I'm Labia. I'm a third year PhD student at the Francis Crick Institute. Hi, my name's Mari Johnson. I'm a PhD student at the Oxford Vaccine Group. Hi everyone, I am Miguel. I'm a fourth year immunology PhD student at University of Liverpool. Hi, my name is Kim Bain and I'm an immunologist at Glasgow University. Hello, my name is Theodore Previsi. I'm an immunology research technician at Imperial College London and a volunteer at the Exxon Vaccine Centre. That is finally coming to us young people to get their vaccinations. If you get the vaccine and you're exposed to SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes the disease, you're less likely to become ill with COVID-19. This is because the vaccine gives your immune system a brief picture of what the virus looks like. So when it encounters it again, your immune system already has an antibody response and a memory response ready to fight against the virus. With the COVID-19 vaccine, the chance of us being hospitalized is significantly reduced. Yes, you should still get the vaccine. This is because we know that young individuals can still become seriously ill with COVID-19. And we know that long COVID actually affects young people just as much as older people. So for your own well-being, you should still definitely get the vaccine. Vaccines have been shown to reduce transmission. That reduction in transmission is gonna help us get out of lockdown. The more people that are vaccinated in the population, the easier it is to achieve herd immunity. Herd immunity is basically that because most people in a population are vaccinated, the virus can no longer easily transmit person to person. This especially protects and shields individuals that are more vulnerable with underlying health conditions and those that can't be vaccinated. The answer is 100% yes, you should when you're offered it. We don't know how long natural immunity lasts for those that have already been infected with COVID. The protective immune response that you've developed will be boosted with the vaccination. Since the pandemic started, hundreds of different vaccine approaches were tested and others are still being evaluated. Billions of doses will need to be produced and this is easier to achieve with different vaccines using different materials. From my personal experience as a NHS worker, I had the chance to receive the mRNA vaccine. And you can see here the proof. My vaccinated arm was sore. I also felt very tired in the, uh, and in the night I developed a mild fever. These symptoms are quite common. These usually go away after a day or two and you can take painkillers such as paracetamol. Serious side effects are rare. So this is a common question and it's a common concern and actually with my friends we've been talking about this quite a lot because many of my pals are thinking about starting a family in the near future. So we need more research but at the moment the data from clinical trials suggests that all of the approved vaccines in the UK don't affect fertility. So we know that people who were recruited to the vaccine trials for all three approved vaccines in the UK were asked not to get pregnant during the study. But obviously some people did get pregnant and we know that 57 did um, across three different trials. When we look at the vaccinated versus the unvaccinated groups, we don't see a difference in the number of people who fell pregnant. And this tells us that the fertility rate is not, is not affected. The other good news is that people who got pregnant in these trials who now got the vaccine many months ago are continued to be in monitors and we know that all of those pregnancies are completely normal. The answer is no. Uh, none of the approving vaccine contains a live or an active form of this virus. Instead, what they use um, in the AstraZeneca vaccine is a viral vector backbone. They take an attenuated uh, adenovirus, so it's just common cold virus. And then we use that to express the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 and that's what stimulates the immune response. The mRNA vaccines, um, this uses a bit of the genetic material from the virus. When it's injected into you, that material then enters your cells and starts expressing the spike proteins. Um, and again, our body's immune system can recognize it, um, mount an immune response, and that's what's gonna be protective. 